and enjoy free shipping as soon as next day. Don't miss the Black Friday Buy One Give One event only at the Living Spaces Sleep Center. Living Spaces. Now at five, how safe is their water? It's a story we've been following for more than three months now. Some of the water supply in Watts being investigated for lead contamination. Where things stand tonight. Plus, a Philippine ambassador to the U.S. urging those who have not secured citizenship to return home. How members in the Filipino community in L.A. are reacting. And one of the most infamous murders in L.A. history more than 40 years later. Does the killer have a chance to go free? The News at 5 starts now. This is NBC4 News at 5. And we begin with a development in a murder case from 1980. One of the men sentenced to death for a massacre inside a Bob's Big Boy in L.A. may return to court this week to ask for his sentence to be thrown out. Good evening, everyone. I'm Annabelle Sedano. And I'm Colleen Williams. It was one of the most infamous mass murders in the city's history. Employees and customers herded into a freezer, then shot to death. Investigative reporter Eric Leonard joins us live from the newsroom with details. Eric. Hi, Colleen and Annabelle. Well, the man who's asking to be resentenced here is one of two who were convicted in the robbery and murder back in 1982. He's now 79 years old. And even though he was initially sentenced to be executed, there's now a chance he could be released on parole. This is 44-year-old video of Ricardo Rene Sanders, then 25, after he was arrested by LAPD detectives. Sanders was convicted of being one of two gunmen who robbed this Bob's Big Boy restaurant in Mid-City, L.A. in December 1980, forced 11 people, employees and customers, into a freezer, then fired a shotgun into their backs. Sanders was found guilty of murdering four, including a father, Cesario Luna, whose son was also working that night and witnessed the killing. Sanders was sentenced to death. He's unsuccessfully appealed numerous times, most recently in federal court, where he argued that witnesses who identified him were wrong or had been coerced by police. State and federal courts have ruled his conviction and sentence should stand. Now, since California no longer carries out executions, Sanders has been effectively serving a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. That was until the state legislature passed a law that allowed people sentenced for any crime to request a resentencing if they were also serving an extra year for having a prior felony conviction. And this means that Sanders can now ask for the entire sentence, not just that extra year, be thrown out. And it appears that's what's happening. We started looking into court files for information about this case last week, and there's almost nothing there. Sanders' lawyers have not filed a, resent a resentencing request that we can see, and the L.A. County District Attorney's Office has not filed a response or an objection. But a DA's office spokesperson told us today the DA is opposed to reducing this sentence. It said in an email, we are objecting to the defense request to resentence to life with the possibility of parole. Now, there was a hearing set for Friday, and a judge could decide to reduce Sanders' term, which, because of his age, would make him eligible for an immediate parole hearing and potential release. I talked by phone earlier this week with the prosecutor who tried this murder case back in 1981 and 1982. He was stunned and said he was sick to his stomach on hearing that Sanders' life sentence could be reduced. But there's more. The California Supreme Court has agreed to decide in an unrelated case whether the legislature could pass a law that allows for this kind of resentencing at all. That case is being briefed right now. Arguments will likely happen later next year, and a decision could mean resentencing like this would no longer be allowed. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm investigative reporter Eric Leonard, NBC4 News. Back to you. Eric, thank you very much for that update. Meantime, new water testing in Watts shows lead is still present in some of the tap water. The testing is being carried out after Mayor Karen Bass and city leaders called for an investigation into the source of the contamination back in September. NBC4's Camilla Rambaldi joins us from Watts with the latest. Camilla. Annabelle, the housing authority tells me they have been collecting water samples across four of its public housing sites here in Watts and will continue to do so through the rest of this month. Hakla also tells me they are working on a plan to replace older plumbing lines on the exterior side at one of its sites. It's like a rust. People who live in Watts have been raising concerns about their water. I've been stopped drinking the faucet water years ago. Me personally, I don't trust the water, period. It's a story NBC4 has been following since August after a study by the Better Watts Initiative detected...